John here, guys. We're here at the night spot, and Evan Turner is here preparing for the season of DRL. Heads up, DRL champion himself. He has come down all the way from Tennessee to train with the Houston crew for the upcoming DRL season. Very interesting that he came to the same place that we come to in order to train against our guys. So you're training and you decided to take a flight down to Houston to get yeah, some? Yeah, no, I was telling them like, uh, so over the summer I kind of did like a tour of the US to race with all kinds of people. And like Houston really was like the best group of guys that I, I found, the best tracks, best guys. But how are we supposed to challenge and help train the best drone racing pilot in the world? Well, Evan came down prepared with a throttle game. You reduce your throttle a certain percentage in order to keep everyone as close as possible. So if you win by three seconds, reduce your throttle by 3% and we keep running that over and over and over. The end goal is for that everyone to be about the same speed through the track so that we can keep slowing ourselves up or speeding ourselves up so that we're all in Evan's face around the track. So let's go check out the track that Neil cooked up in order to help him prepare for being the champion once again. Then we'll go this way and it's around the pole, around the tree, tree, pole, tree, gate. What did you say? In the star gate. Pole gate, star, yeah, wait, what was it again? <laughs> it was in the star gate. In the star gate. Tree gate, so it's like a nice circle. So it's basically, you're gonna go over that yellow gate over there, sort yeah, of, or next okay. to it, uh -huh. yep. Circle. Into this gate. All right. Then we're gonna come up and split S, like go over this tree, over this tree. Onto the parking deck, past the trees, and then back down. Say this part again. So gate. So it's it's a you know it's like split S here around the tree, down the parking lot, around the pole, and into this gate. Okay. And then up and over. And it's like uh, on the parking deck. This is DRL track. DRL style track. We, we, we keeping it tight around full send, the tree. Full send today. All right, got Full send? I only want to do partial send. Partial send. <laughs> Dropping over, up and over the bushes. Being right side of this tree, right side of this next tree. That round both of them, and then it's up and around this pole. And then here it's, oh. Yep. Yeah, I thought it'd be worse up there than this. So out around the tall pole. Okay, one of the key differences I just noticed okay. is that you knew the entire track after one track wall. Oh yeah, no, that's one of like, I think I've talked about that in like a Bardwell video before. Like one of my biggest things that I work on is being able to watch a track and just like know it. Because I think that's such a huge advantage. If you can go out there and know the track before everybody else and actually then work on the lines, then you will at most have an advantage over everyone else because everyone else is still focusing on learning the track. And if you already know it, then that's a huge advantage. The way I practice that is just, I want to be flying new tracks all the time. Like I'm not the one to like go out and grind a track forever. Uh, I like fly it and I'm like, okay, let's do a new one. And just kind of figuring out a new one really quick, watching it one time and then working on the lines. That is like one of the biggest skills you can learn and take away. So do you uh, feel like you have a super good memory in school? If my dad's watching this right now, he knows for a fact that I'm very bad at vocabulary. My grades are uh, one to say that uh, on vocab tests. He always got mad at me because he said, Evan, they give you the answers. This is the one test you should get 100 on because they give you all the answers ahead of time. And you know, study time might have been a factor. Okay, so you don't have to have a photographic memory. I it's a not, skill you can yeah, improve. I, I do not have a photographic memory. Nice, that I was impressive. Not. What do you think, Sam? What do you think of this track? Yeah. Man, I like it. I like the track. It's wide, it's open, it's fast. You know, I like fast, right? Now, if, if one of those big quads hits your quad. Yeah, see, and that's my whole thing. But I mean, I can't I can't worry about that. Just gotta fly, so we'll see. That's the uh, race four, yeah. yeah. The race four that wants to tonight, so you're more welcome to try it out. This one even has light weights on it as well. We're trying to get to like 1,350 grams, 1,380 grams. Okay, almost three times more heavy. You can hear like in the air when you go around, you can just hear the air that's moving. Like if drone racing is gonna become a spectator or anything, like this is what it'll be. Right. So how much slower? Very slower than Freedom Spec. Slower than Freedom Spec. Like, I think Freedom Spec is the best practice for DRL. And it, like, uh, it really helps me, I think. So you, chances are he's gonna dominate no, again no, this no, no. season. Well, I, I, I mean, it's very similar. Like, oh, is that the sprinklers? Right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Sprinklers uh, come on here. That's just an extra obstacle. That's cool. When you're flying at the quad's maximum potential, then like you really have to like think of fundamentally like how you're turning the quad. Like what the motor's like, 
for yaw, for example, mm. like you want to minimize, you don't want to use any yaw because that means you're at full throttle and say you're going through a turn using yaw, you're, you're cutting off two motors, like they, they can't go full throttle. Mm. But if you can figure out a turn with just roll and pitch and at least minimize the amount of yaw and turn with the other motors, you'll have more thrust, like inherently you will have more thrust. Yeah. So. That was the thing that I really focused on with Freedom Spec. Did you mess with the camera angle any to no, we're, we're achieve that? To use 45. Oh, okay. Um, really? Okay. Yeah, but it, it really what you'll see, like uh, a lot of some of my turns are like kind of like I'll be flying sideways, and then it, you can just try to fly with pitch. So like you'll be flying towards something like kind of have an angle, and then it's like you can kind of pull to the corner, which is a roll and pitch of the same, and that would do a turn. So if you can in a straightaway, uh. you're not losing near as much like the thrust isn't near as important. Uh, so you can kind of cock it sideways in a straight. And then when you actually go into a turn, because in a turn, that's where like the difference is made. You work on lines and then you work on like how you're actually turning the water. The, it's a uh, really uh, dense, uh, full of like talented pilots, which was something that was not like, you can go find one guy who's really fast in this place, one guy who's really fast in this place, but it's hard to find a group of like a, a lot of talented pilots. So that's what I found here. Also a really uh, great group of guys as well. So that's kind of where... Mm, so just, Evan just said that Johnny Five is a talented pilot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> so he brought uh, oh, no, so one, uh, so one quad like this for me and for Neil close, to race. Like so against him, uh, give him to some give pressure. him, yeah, yeah. So this quad is actually fast, faster than uh, so Racer 4, so we're kind of like adjusting the speed of this quad with the throttle cap, giving, like giving Evan a little bit it's of competition. Really, really yeah, it's uh, so he wanted you, he came down here to get the training. I feel like we're learning from him a lot, like, it's yeah. not just you know, it, but I hope he's having good fun. So now if he wins again, you can say you helped train. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nice, so do you think you're gonna pull it out again? To win this year? Yeah, I don't know. Vanover said he's training hard. He's got new motors. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, flying in real life, that's definitely different than the sim, of course. Like, you know, that's a, just not necessarily the flying itself, but it's a different atmosphere. I have to set myself up for success more than anything. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to do. I don't know how it'll come out on the actual race day, but setting myself up for success is the only thing that I can do, prepare the best I can, show up, and what happens, happens. Is there incentive for you guys to actually win? Like, yeah. do you get something for winning? Yeah, no, there, in any racing yeah. series, like for every race, there's, there's, there's incentive a to perform. Nice. Um, so yeah, we everybody wants to do be the best they can, and you get a night, get a dollar to a nice dinner if you win. <laughs> but nice but dinner. Yeah, course, the end goal, yeah, is like you want to get a contract for the next year, so you want oh, yeah, to be yeah, in the yeah. next. Um, well, Vanover's doing a lot of commercial work. Do you think yeah. that's a distraction from him training to oh, actually totally. win? Uh, at the end of the day, like you have to, you have to decide what you want to do. Like I kind of had a similar situation. Is like I had to decide if I wanted to pursue the filming side of things or if I wanted to like go out and be the best racer that I possibly could be. And um, obviously, like most people can't do that because it does make more sense financially to go the filming side. But if I can run the business and race at the same time and at the highest level, and that made more sense for me personally. So I, I do filming things on the side, but I really have like kind of decided to pursue the racing thing because who knows what it'll be someday, but I want to at least make a mark on it. That's I awesome. Can. I'm doing great, man. People will want to buy 533 stuff when they see you guys winning, and now you have all the baddest team pilots out there, so it's like somebody's going to win. We want to support the fast guys, so it's like I, I'm, there's only one of me, and like of course I want to support the most I can, but at the end of the day, like, I'm friends with all the fast guys. We're a group of buddies. We're all in a group chat. We talk about girls and whatever we're eating that night. I mean, like, it's whatever. That's awesome. Um, so, like, at the end of the day, I'm supporting my friends, and they might happen to be good pilots, but I could care less. Like, I just want to support the cool people in FPV. How does it feel training with the, with the champ? Oh, man, it's really fun. It feels cool. Oh, man. And, and it's, I mean, like, just flying all these big quads slow. And, like, I, for sure, mine's a little faster than Evan's, but it still feels good to be, like, there, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah, really, yeah. really racing. So, it, yeah, it's fun. It, we already have all these little rivalries within our chapter. Yeah. But then it brought everybody closer, and then really like ratcheted it up a bit, and that was that was really fun to see too. Yep. Go! Right there, yo. Around that, underneath that now, gate. Drop he down. can't. He hit that gate and then go up. He can't see what you're pointing at. <laughs> Man. Whole shot don't win races, Sam. Damn, I got the whole shot. You didn't get it. That's all I know. <laughs> you didn't get the whole shot. Because you always get the whole shot. Yeah. Hey, it doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. It don't matter. Ask any racer, any real racer. 
<laughs> winning is winning. Winning's winning. <laughs> I would recommend you buy it unless you're on DRL. But if you're on or you're friends with somebody who's on DRL, then they're great to uh, race each other. I like the idea of like for the community itself to be able to use their drone, the spec drone, for other things, use the motors for other things, use the batteries for other things. And that, like this, you might be able to do some freestyle with it or film with it or something, but it's like, the batteries are pretty big, you can never use those for five inch. The motors are kind of expensive and you never really use them anything for anything other than this. I mean, danger, yeah, sure, but I mean, crashes like full drone, uh, danger has never scared a drone pod away from anything, I don't think, so. That's true. <laughs> I don't, that's not one of my reasons. Way midair! Yeah, I know. Like, Five years in drone racing, I've never had three way me there. When three quads collapsing with each other, like that's crazy. Oh, that's right. I guess because these quads are big, so yeah, they're slow they're and big, 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 it's much easier to be there. Oh, you can't fit inside the gate. That's how it's that's how it is in DRL. Like the quads are so big, and we're all so close, and like the speed is oh my god, it's crazy. But going through these tiny gates, especially like yeah. only so many quads are gonna fit through one. Yeah. That's a different skill than five inch because when you're behind, you kind of have like different lines. If you especially if you want to pass somebody, like if you want to pass somebody. And you're behind them. You have to fly a different line than you normally would because they're you know they're going to be on the line. So you have to kind of try and figure out a different way. But it to also pass because them. of prop, you can feel pro force of the pilot in yeah, front of you. It's crazy because it yeah. quads so much heavier, creates so much more turbulence. So you just slower if you're behind someone. You just slower. Yeah, Neil said wow. it's like the opposite of cars. Yeah. It's like opposite draft. You don't want to be. You don't want to be behind. Oh, that's crazy. So it's like almost counterintuitive. Yeah. yeah no way. Man. So in DRL, they put another quad for the, for you on the line, did, or do you have to go get your own quad? No, 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 they put them up there. Oh my God, I just put them, I just put four on there, exactly the same. T minus one minute. All right, all right. All they want to do is drop my throttle, boy. See, that's cold blood. They you gotta earn it back now. Gotta earn it back? What you? you? Cheated your way to victory? Man, I don't cheat. OGs don't cheat, baby. Come on now. And I ain't got no lanyard. You look, no lanyard. I ain't even trying yet. <laughs> All right, let's go. I just got to beat Joe, nah. <laughs> Come on, Sammy, you got to avenge me. <laughs> hey! You know, over here, Ivan, like, hey, he's a little too high. I need to turn it down. Famous, <laughs> San famous Sandy, right, like, coming yeah. with the win. Yeah, everybody else wrecked, so I, I, I did. <laughs> Man, that was good. Good job, Andy, good job. Thank you, thank you. Where did you pull it from, like? I did, I did, I, I thought like I'm alone, I didn't see anyone, and then suddenly Andy is like, Whoa. Okay, we got five quads on the line, let me get five those. Andy, Sam. Ready. Yeah, Alright, everybody's yeah. ready. Arm them up. Going live in less than five. Go! <laughs> Sam won. Nice one. Oh, Sam. Sam, come down two. Sam. Down two. And it's down, down, down. And I did it legally Andy now. Right down and down and, two and now. I did it legally. Down, down two. I did it all legally. So all of y'all who doubted me in the beginning, <laughs> y'all, I'm going to just cock, keep it real. I won that one legally. Hey, Sam, and guess what you won? What? Minus two percent. Yeah. Minus two. <laughs> yeah. See, now see, this is the part about this game that I'm not liking. See, I thought when you win, you go up. But see, in this game, when you win, you go down. So you now we're going to see. You now we're going down. Yeah, all right. Well, we midair, but then my quad flew from the top. Well, dang. Sometimes even the champ crashes. Oh, yeah, when, I hit people. When Joe Mama crashes into him. It's Joe Mama again. Okay. Oh my God, Joe Mama! Joe Stop Mama baby! takes out the champ once again. So far, you're giving Evan the best practice yeah. out of anybody. Nah, Neil was keeping up pretty good. No, but he can, your LEDs help. Because yeah, I was yeah, DVRing yeah, yeah. him. He can see you the whole time, right. so he knows exactly. Man, my, sh my hand shake by the top by the end yeah. of the dome. So that way, we he in front of me. He cut that split S just a little bit tighter than me and popped out right in front of me. I just back right into the back of him. <laughs> so, Mom, I'm telling you, bro, it's, uh, it's great practice because that happens when planes shoot out. Hey, it's you don't crash when you don't fly. That's right. Oh, so, yeah. Wise words of a Sounds fun. good. We got two Racer 4s in the air and three 5 inch quads all going at it, battling. We've adjusted throttles so that we get an equal amount of speed for all of these quads to give heads up the most amount of practice possible. We have structured the track 
in order to have a DRL style, very long track. And then on top of that, we have adjusted everyone's throttle so that Evan sees the maximum amount of quads in his face, as he mentioned earlier. Check it out as they go around the track. Man, it is so cool to see a race this close. Oh. Here we go. We got all six quads coming around the line. Here we go. We got Joe, Mama, and Evan fighting for the leading position. He is giving the DRL champion, Evan Turner, a run for his money. Oh, Joe Mama hits the ground. Evan Turner makes the pass. Joe Mama comes right back. Joe Mama just barely in front. He can see him though. We got Neil in front of him. Oh, look at the precision on that turn, guys. Oh, he's got Joe Mama right in his sights. My goodness, this is thrilling. Oh, man. Sam is now out of the race, but Joe Mama manages to maintain just a few feet of a lead on Evan Turner. Oh, man, he's right in his sights, really giving Evan some pushing practice. Oh, and Evan makes the pass. Oh, but a bobble. Joe passes right back. The gate is down. We're going to bypass that gate for now. Oh, oh. Evan's got him. Oh, 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 oh my God. Holy crap. Where the hell is my radio? Did you lose your radio? Yeah. Hey, where's your 533 radio? Uh, for DRL, we have to use Tyrannus. So, oh, so this you're thing is like getting ready. You're getting this ready. thing is ancient. <laughs> like, this that's thing has like a thousand hey, hours of DRL sim on it. That's a relic. No, it's not ancient. I'm still using the same one. What? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this thing has like a thousand hours of DRL sim on it. I actually bought this radio five years ago in Russia, and it was used already. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Bought it for 67 rubles. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, it was like 5,000. Yeah, 6 million or something. Yeah, yeah. Maybe 6,000. Equivalent to a nickel. Holy oh, shit. Oh, my God. How many games do we have now? I flashed before my eyes right there. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. Joe won that one. Joe won that one. Oh. Joe, I'm sorry. When do you think the bells with the screw gonna come? Yeah. Uh, two weeks. Oh, two uh, weeks. Yeah. Not two TBS weeks. Two weeks. Well, <laughs> three. <laughs> <laughs> two TBS weeks, but three. It's like getting your iPhone delivered by Steve Jobs. <laughs> yeah, it's dope, man. Yeah, I didn't even have to wait. Yeah, yeah that's right. That was the fastest shipping. Pyro yeah. ain't got oh, nothing on that. Right there. <laughs> to deliver that. <laughs> One more time, Evan is going to go up facing off against my nemesis, Joe Mama. And let's see if the DRL champ himself can overtake Joe Mama. Joe Mama's been employing all of his dirty racing tactics in order to try to defeat Evan. He's managed to take out a racer four with a five inch quad like four different times. I don't know how he's doing it. He does put a lot of TPU protection on his quad. Joe Mama, professional builder. Evan making a change to his setup, going with the rapid fire module this time. Let's see if it makes a difference in his flying. He's been struggling to keep up with Joe Mama. Will this practice pay off? Will he be able to pull out another win on the Drone Racing League? Sam gets up to the line once again. All right, Evan changes seats so he can be next to who's gonna mid-air him. We got Joe Mama out in front once again. Neil right there with him and heads up coming in right below. There's a bit of a bobble, but all three of them are in a close pack. Heads up comes around, inches away. He's about to make the pass. Can he do it? There he is with the pass. Oh, Joe passes back. Evan passes back. Evan now in the lead. Oh, we got a ton of quads all grouped together. One for Evan, one for Neil, one for Yvonne. Oh, he manages to stay in the air. This is nuts. 
It's crazy out there. The number of claws all flying in a huge bunch. Neil decides to come in down. Oh, Evan lands. Wow, that was awesome. Yeah, that was, I'm telling you, the midairs are scary. <laughs> next stop on the training list next stop so the way i kind of do it a training camp type thing so like two weeks before we go to an event i like really start to practice again i don't like to grind like all the time because then you get burnt out so you want to have like that mm. excitement and that like you want to be like rejuvenated really want to fly all the time light practice here and there for fun in between races but then two weeks before i really start to fly and like back home i'll try and fly like, eight hours or something fly a full afternoon then like as you get closer like you'll fly a couple days you might take a break Fly a couple of days, might take a break. Fly a couple of days, might take a break. Then near the end, like I try and so like say that there's like four or five days left. Then I usually don't fly with any other deer all putts. Like I, I just mm. practice by myself. Cause like you did the great practice flying with somebody flying. Um, but then I feel like you kind of lose sight of actually working on your own lines and like you kind of work on just like actual racing. But then you need to actually improve your skill. So then I find I do that a lot better when I'm flying by myself. So I'll work mm. with them. I'll like come out to here to Houston, go fly with the other deer all pilots, really work on the actual racing aspect. And then right before we actually go, I want to work on like being able to fly at my actually absolute best and fly my to my best skill level. So that's the last few days when I actually go like by myself, turn on some music and just like fly all day right just me, uh, to work on the skill. Well, did you, hopefully you got what you wanted from the Houston oh, crew. Totally. And like Didn't... like I said, like over the summer, like I literally pretty much went to just about every big racing scene in the U.S. Nice. And it was like Houston and Detroit were like my two favorite by far. And before awesome. the, the first year event, I went to Detroit to practice and it was great flying with them. Now I'm down here in Houston and it's like, uh, it's great to come down to Houston because you have like Neil as like your track designer and it's like, yeah. it's really hard to come out with tracks all the time and have somebody like Neil who's like amazing at it. Uh, that's awesome, so that's what makes Houston great. Plus all the people are awesome. You have the best tracks, best locations, really awesome people. And uh, so yeah, couldn't ask for anything better out of Houston. Okay. Man, well, thanks for coming. It's been awesome hosting you. We're gonna look forward to your season on the DRL. Well, yeah. What do you think in the comments, guys? Do you like this kind of stuff? Are you gonna watch the Drone Racing League? Be sure it premieres at the end of September and be sure to watch this season. This is easily going to be the highest amount of talent that we've ever seen on this show. We have three multi-GP champions represented on this show now. And it's just unbelievable the amount of talent that is ratcheting up. This is truly the highest level drone racing going on anywhere in the world at this point. Thanks, guys.